Hello everyone, welcome to Property Zone Live again. Today we're going to be doing a very short but very interesting topic because we've been talking a lot about what is happening inside the property world. But today I want to pull everyone back a bit to look at things happening outside the property world. Three things. Now, if you have been driving around in Klang Valley, you know, I'm sure this is a scenario that is not strange to you. Take a look at this. You know, sometimes when you stop at a traffic light, there are a lot of grab car, uh, grab driver, grab food driver, actually waiting to deliver the hot, fresh food to their customer. Not only that, you also see panda food, right? And in fact, the density of this uh, grab food driver or even this uh, panda driver is getting more and more popular, if you are aware. And sometimes, even a, a friend of mine, who, you know, always having a home cook at home, not less than three times a week, their kids will order you know, outside food at the click, at the convenience of their phone, and have the food delivered to their doorstep. Now, what is the implication? For me, I think I want to share this thought with you. Okay, let's look at this. People go to restaurants to eat basically for two reasons. And this is an, uh, not an old reason, but take a look. First, eat to live. Second, live to eat. What I mean by that is, some people go to the restaurant just to eat. They just want to get their uh, meal done so that they can have the energy and then get back to work, you know, continue with their days. Some people live to eat, as in when they go to the restaurant, there is a getting around, right? People go there. So that we all can chit chat a bit, no? Just to catch up with your friends. So for them, it's live to eat. But now let's just concentrate eat to live part. And what do I mean? That people just want to have the meal, uh, they can quickly get uh, get done with it, and then so continue with the day program. Now, what does it mean for F and B outlet? From my point of view, I think some of you may also be aware that if you're running an F and B outlet your shop must be visible not just to the eyes of the actual world. That means that your shop, if you're running an F&B, you're running a restaurant, that means your shop not only visible to the people passing by, but in fact, what is more crucial and more important thing now, your shop must be able to be visible to the eyes of the social media. Because when people want to order food, let's say for example, they uh, open up the grab food, if your shop is not visible to the eyes of the phone user, I think you will lose out big time, all right? So, not only you'll be visible to the eyes of the actual world, you must be visible to the social world as well. Now, if you're running a restaurant and you have a high traffic, a high traffic restaurant now may not need a very big dining space anymore to cater for the, dine, uh, the people who dine in, in the restaurant. High traffic restaurant might not need to operate in a very busy and very expensive area anymore. Why? Because if you are, people can actually search through you using the social media. Basically, the grab food driver, the panel driver will be able to use the apps to locate the restaurant and then deliver the food to you. So in this case, if you look at this, from a restaurant owner point of view, uh, you may be able to cut down some of the renovation on the dining. Second, you may be have some saving if you decide to move your shop from the most expensive area, high traffic area, to the second tier area. And third, in terms of workers' specialist allocation within the restaurant, a high traffic restaurant definitely needs more cooks now. Than waiter. Why? Because imagine, I've seen a restaurant, you know, the restaurant by itself is already packed, but there are more than 15 motorbikes outside, all wearing grab food and panda food to take orders from the restaurant. So you can see the uh, busy 
business in the kitchen so that people who are waiting for food are able to get their food as fast as possible. Now, second thing, if you are in Klang Valley, if you pass by some of the area, I think this scene also not a strange thing to you. People are queuing up to buy bubble tea. Bubble tea is not a new thing in Malaysia, but somehow or other, the, the past one, two years, it just picked up the fancy again. And then every place you go, you can see not just one shop open. In fact, it could be taking 40% of the one same row of shop, and they are all selling the same thing. Again, this is another place. People queuing up, especially after lunch. This is so-called dessert time. Some of the brands, I think you are very familiar, and sometimes when I look at it, I would thought these are the brand coming from the zoo because you can see all the animals' images. Okay. Now, what does it have to mean? Okay, let's, let me give you some of the facts that about bubble tea by some of the research. Research say that this fancy is going to last for more than just a while. That means we will see this fancy going on at least for another foreseeable future. Second thing, people start wondering. Being one of the most uh, famous coffee shop, Starbucks, would they actually put bubble tea in the menu? Next, in fact, some people are jokes. You know, everybody knows about the bubble tea, the sugar content is very high. Some of them are actually joke about, you know, are diabetes centers next, uh, the next good investment giving the high volume of the people buying the bubble tea. Now, okay, some facts about the shop. The commercial shop lots, the environment has actually changed a lot because of the bubble tea fancy. Now, they give you some of the figures. I actually look online and actually check with some of the friends who are actually operating the bubble tea shop. Some shops are able to break even their setup costs within just two months. And their monthly revenue is about 120000 Can you imagine that? Okay. Normally, these shops are operating in a high office workers, student traffic, with existing surrounding restaurant F&B outlets. Like I say, you need to have the restaurant F&B outlet. These people are basically, after dining, they will come out. Bubble tea is not a lunch meal. Bubble tea is actually an excellent choice for many to have their dessert after lunch. Okay. If you zoom down in Klang Valley. Hello, everyone. The most high-dense places in Klang Valley is basically break down to SS15, Sri Pataling, Chiras Trader Square. Now let's take a look of the, take a look of the numbers here. Ah, before I forget, sometimes people, there's a new saying, a new benchmark people are using it. If you want to invest in a commercial shop lot, for example, this actually become a benchmark for people to indicate what is the potential outlook in this area. I give you an example. There are actually some of the old places, the shop lot has been there for 20, 30 years. High traffic volume, but there is not a single bubble tea shop there. And what does it tell you? Because we need to look at it. When you look at the bubble tea uh, customer, we look at the, basically the demographic. The demographic of the people are basically youngster. And these are the people who bring in uh, the spice up value for any property in the commercial area to go up. That's very simple and that's very straightforward. And I tell you, since the bubble tea fancy uh, comes in one year, two years ago, there's actually unbelievable rental appreciation over the years. Let's take a look at the numbers. SS15 Subang, this is the place where the students, office workers, and it's almost impossible to find a car park during the peak time. The shop lot, according to the research by the H property, the rental for a ground floor used to be 15000 Used to be 15000 But after the bubble tea shop come in, the rental had been to shoot up to 10000 in just one to two years. Sri Protaling is another hot places. The strip tiling 
shop lot at the ground floor used to be 8,000. But and again, because of the bubble tea fancy, the shop lot, the rental has been go up to 12,000. There's another one. Uh, the trust title square, I don't have the figures for the moment. But I just imagine, if you are the shop lot owner, even though you are not renting out to the bubble tea shop, but there will definitely be a spill over effects on the same low shop lots. In fact, from what I heard, looking at the Subang SS15, uh, there are actually customers with the ready check want to actually rent a shop in SS15, but currently the shop lot all tenanted out and with a good price. Now, third, what's happening outside property world? Then the latest, I want to give you a bit about the US-China trade war. Not just too long ago, you know, presidents of the uh, United States and the president of China, they meet each other and they shake their hand and they think that this trade war is going to be a truce. Unfortunately, the events took a surprise turn. Just last Friday on the 2nd of August, US announced to impose the 10% on the remaining 300 billion US dollar worth of goods that was imported from China. So they have tax on the previous 50 billion, 200 billion, and now the 300 billion is the remaining goods. So basically, you can say that Trump is basically showing his last card. And, and because of that, offshore USD versus Yuan, the Chinese renminbi, has broken the seven levels. I think if those of you who have followed uh, our previous sessions, you will know that you know, what we are looking at, how would this affect the property market is we are looking at if China trade war is going, you know, turning at this corner, going this direction, we are forcing the uh, renminbi to devalue the currency just to offset some of the impact from the trade war. And in fact, this is happening now. Seven is basically a very crucial level for one US dollar to change for seven renminbi. And what makes it worse because of this action, US now has officially named China as the currency manipulator, not just under watch list anymore. Last time, there are a few countries, including China, that put under watch list. It's not so serious. But now, US has officially named that China is the currency manipulator. Okay. So, uh, before the session ends, um, answer these questions. Uh, the people with the best answer will walk away with the Bluetooth wireless speaker. This question is, if you're going to make your next property investment, is it going to be a residential or is it going to be commercial? Can you share with us the rationale behind it? Okay, so the best answer for these questions, you walk away a Sony Wi-Fi, a wireless Bluetooth speaker. Okay, so that will be all for today's sessions and I hope to see you all again very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.